It is the 5th of July, 2017, and that can mean only one thing. Boruto, episode 14, the path that Boruto can see. And it's time to fight tiger monkeys, or whatever it is that Nui's meant to be. And this episode kind of draws a conclusion I was not really expecting, honestly. I thought this would go on for a couple more episodes, but I guess not. It kind of started really in earnest last episode and ended this episode, which I'm sure a lot of people are maybe a little annoyed by. I myself still have very mixed feelings on it. I did like the whole fight with Nui at the start. I thought that was pretty cool. It was pretty well animated as well, and Mitsuki tagging in then helping out Boruto to take him down was a cool little thing. I did feel that Nui maybe got taken out a little too easy because some ropes fell on him and he was down for the count, apparently, despite the fact that he's very clearly a very strong kind of beast thing. Samiri's backstory was also kind of interesting. She expanded on how kind of her dad left the village and trained her up as a human weapon and stuff. That was pretty cool. And man, that scene where her dad branded her with the Nui seal, the Tenno Goku or whatever it's called, that was pretty intense. He was a creepy old dude who had the kind of same tubes as pain and stuff. I wasn't really sure what was going on with that. But man, that was quite an intense scene and it kind of sheds light on Sumire and I think definitely justifies her for her actions and stuff. Kind of, anyway, because it was revealed that Nui was in charge of the ghost incident anyway. But I do kind of like the fact that they're delving into how Anbu is quite a weird organisation and those who were involved were kind of messed up people. This was kind of interesting to see someone grow up through the twisted guise of someone who was brought up in the Foundation, which Sai was as well. And talking about Sai, because I'm terrible at segues... The fight between Mitsuki and Sumire was also pretty cool. That was, again, well choreographed and stuff. I really liked Sumire's water pistol kind of move thing, where she was shooting water ninjutsu using, I guess, a shuriken in her hand to guide the thing. It reminded me a lot of the second Mizukage from, well, from obviously Shippuden, but also he was a playable character in Storm 4 and had the cool gunslinger kind of water ninjutsu vibe that I really liked. But of course, Boruto had to break it up and get stabbed in the arm. I didn't expect anything less, really. I wasn't expecting them to either take each other out or someone to win the fight. But it was nice to see they kind of had a round two carry on from last week. But ultimately, Boruto won over Sumire and she kind of stopped being the villain then. And honestly, I was a little disappointed I don't really know where I expected this to go. I didn't really envision her dying or anything. But I don't know, to me, this felt like a little bit of a cop-out. It wasn't terrible, per se, because Boruto did win over all those other people who possessed by ghosts by just being good friends and opening up their hearts. But I don't know, I kind of felt like he should have worked a little harder against Sumire. There should have at least been a couple more episodes of maybe her fighting or resisting it or kind of giving him to his influence, but then coming back to the evil side again or whatever. Because really, Sumire had two episodes to be evil, and I quite liked her that way. I'm just hoping that maybe in the future, in future episodes, she's a little bit of a darker character, as opposed to just going back to her class rep kind of cute self. And I don't know how other people felt about this, uh, let me know in the comments, because it's always nice to hear other people's opinions on stuff like this. But I did like the little touch at the end that even though Nui quote-unquote sacrificed himself, he kind of lives on in Sumire's hand, I guess. Maybe he'll come into the plot again and she'll become kind of like a beast user or something. It definitely sets her up to being an interesting character now because she's got a backstory that I thought was told fairly well and has become a character I think that a lot of people are starting to like more than just a kind of cute background character for comic relief and stuff. And that basically seems to kind of wrap up the first arc of Boruto, which I'm going to call the Ghost Arc. Although, as we're about to discuss, the next time preview does suggest that they are following on from this, so they're not going to wrap up and kind of forget about it and maybe mention it again. It's definitely leading into something, which is cool. We might as well, being as I just talked about it, talk about next time.
next time, it's going in an interesting direction. I didn't really think they'd do this, but it's Shikardai and the others kind of planning to track down the other Foundation members and people linked to Danzo's team, when Danzo is alive, obviously, but hiding it from Boruto. So I'm not sure if they're going to kind of maybe come across other people who possess evil traits and stuff, and maybe they'll be the bad guys for the next arc or two, which would make sense because this is a shounen anime, so they've kind of shown one person, Sumire, who grew up in the, under the influence of Danzo's group. So I guess the escalation of power would be they'll now introduce a group of people or something. Again, though, that's just me getting ahead of myself. Maybe they're not going in that direction or whatever. But it's definitely kind of cool to see that when one arc kind of closes, I don't even know if this is closing. Maybe this is halfway through. And maybe next week we'll get introduced to someone even more evil than Sumire. And that will be fine, too. But either way, next week seems to be quite an interesting episode. And before I do wrap up, I just got to say that we got a new ending theme this episode, which is Sayonara Moon Town by the band Scenario Art. It did take me a good few minutes to translate it because, as you can see on the screen there, if you can read Katakana, it says Sayonara Moon Town. And I thought that was actually them saying mountain, as in Sayonara Mountain, which, let's face it, makes as much sense as Sayonara Moon Town. So I spent several minutes googling it until I happened to come across someone mentioned that it was Sayonara Moon Town instead. Or Goodbye Moon Town, I guess, if you're going to translate all of it. And honestly, I really like this ending, both visually and musically. The visuals I like because they kind of play back the last few episodes. I know there's only been 14 of them, so it's not like they really need a recap, but it's better to do it this way than have flashbacks all the time in the episodes reminding you that this and that are. Which I'm sure will happen anyway. I mean, this is the spin-off of Shippuden, a series where literal episodes would go by with about 90% of flashbacks, and then 10% of a character going, Oh yeah, that happened. I remember now. But I like the whole setup that everyone's kind of remembering what happened and maybe shows that it carries on in their hearts and minds and stuff as they move forwards towards, I don't know, whatever happens in the next arc. And musically as well, I quite like it because it's kind of a duet thing. It sounded a little generic at the start when the guy started singing, but then when the girl kicked in, it was like, oh, okay, this is cool. They've got two singers and then their duet near the end of the song was pretty cool. I It's definitely growing on me and I think I already prefer it to the first ending theme by Boonta or whatever that group is called. It was fine, but after a few listens it did get a little annoying. But this one seems like it won't be as grating, honestly. But then who knows, I've only listened to the song once. And that about wraps up this review of episode 14 of Boruto, Naruto Next Generation, which is a subtitle I very rarely say because it just sounds like a mouthful and is unnecessary because everyone knows what I mean when I say Boruto. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you do want to subscribe, that would be great. If you just want to like the video or dislike the video if you don't like what I'm doing, that's fair enough as well. And until next time, goodbye.